Hey guys, Jerry here. So I had this very funny interaction with this company. Basically what this company wanted to do as YouTube starts alienating more and more people, there's more and more platforms that are emerging to try to capture some of that audience and some of that creator talent. So this is one of those companies that's called Superpeer. And their shtick was they're a place for viewers to either have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you or to join you in live streams. So basically, imagine taking some of the functionality of Patreon and some of the functionality of, let's say, a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live, whatever the live stream is called, and putting it together. The issue, and I'm going to make a longer video on the issues with these platforms that are trying to poach from YouTube. The issue is that they don't offer too much of value. They're basically a middleman. As you know, I've been in tech for a year and the more I study these video platforms, the more I realize it's not too hard to build a video platform or a live stream platform or whatever. You need about two years with a good team. That's all you need. The issue is audience and then revenue. So what a lot of these platforms try to do is they try to be the middleman, take advantage of these emotions, which is that a lot of people are unhappy with YouTube. And then they try to take people with an existing following and try to take that as a sales funnel to drive them into the new platform. So they're not really offering too much. Maybe they're offering some technology and they're offering a separate community and you can make arguments for maybe they're offering looser community guidelines slash censorship guidelines, etc. But if you really think about it, and this is why nothing has really replaced YouTube, it's not too much value added, especially if you cannot gain a new audience. It's reliant on your old audience. It cannot beat one of the biggest draws of YouTube, which is that you have a potential to reach a lot of people. So this guy, Casey, as Super Pure, he reaches out to me. As you guys know, I have a big martial arts channel, a much bigger channel than this. And he wanted to get me to get my audience to try Super Pure. And he was even offering to just pay a fee just to set up an account. The issue is you don't have too many chances with your audience, right? And that's something I think you guys know for certain because before I even had my martial arts channel, I had this channel. Your audience has a limited attention span, a limited cash reserve, so to speak. So you might be able to drive them off platform to occasionally purchase a shirt or buy something. Now, if you're going to get them to commit more, let's say pay for a subscription on a new platform that nobody's heard about, it better be the right platform, right? And so I realized that my martial arts channel wasn't the right platform because I don't have any issues on that channel. I stopped cursing on that channel by 2019, I'm pretty sure. And I stopped looking at any type of martial arts or fights that's not officially sanctioned or in a ring or in a practice sparring type of way. So there was nothing I could really do on Super Peer that would give an incentive for my audience to come. And just so you guys know, I'm also working with other platforms that are more martial arts focused anyways. So Super Peer honestly couldn't work with me, but that doesn't mean the collaboration is done. So I give them an offer. I say, look, this channel, the channel that I'm talking to all of you guys on, you know what we used to do? We used to do Chinese dating show reviews and all these types of reactions to funny TV shows, etc. The issue is one, we constantly had to battle these stupid content claims and even takedowns from companies that didn't understand fair use. And on top of that, sometimes it would still offend the machine learning, the YouTube algorithm and get demonetized. So that was an area that could potentially go on Super Peer because I know a lot of you still want me to do Chinese dating show reviews. So that could have been a good collaboration. So that's what I told Casey. I said, look, I got this other channel and I guarantee you the number of people that would potentially want to come to a platform just to watch with me Chinese dating show reviews. Let's say we do one every week. That's pretty good. And I could, let's say, do once for free every month and the other times they have to pay. I mean, there are people who want to do that. We're negotiating and originally 
the amount of money they were going to offer me just to give Super P a try. They wanted to lower it because I don't have as big a following on this channel that I'm talking to you guys on. Part of what you do in sales and negotiation is, okay, well, let me counter you. So I countered him with an offer. And of course he has a, it was a kind of decent reason, but of course that wasn't the best reason, but he didn't want to give me that money. And that was fine. So I said, whatever, it's okay. It's still money. And I still want to give it a try because at the end of the day, we all want to give platforms that could potentially make YouTube worried a little. We could potentially support them a little. So I tried the platform. I tried the platform. I'm asking him all these questions about the platform. And then suddenly he just stops replying to me. He doesn't check up on me again. So I was like, I don't know. Is he not interested? As you know, I'm uploading on this channel again. So I thought about this all of a sudden. I'm like, there was that platform super period. I'm never going to get people to stop asking me about the Chinese dating shows, right? So maybe I could reach out to them again. Now he's like, oh, um, we're not doing the same offer. In fact, I thought you weren't interested. <laughs> so he, he gave me this, this email reply today. He said, I thought you weren't interested. I'll put the screenshot there. A funny email because I had to actually look back. That's the beauty of the digital age, right? As much as sometimes AI and where the society's going is cringing me out, at least you have a record of everything. So I was like, okay, was I not interested like he claims or he thought he claimed or his excuse, whatever, right? I, I can't subjectively interpret, or I can subjectively, but I can't objectively know what he was, what he actually truthfully is thinking. But he says he thought I wasn't interested. So let me go down and see if I wasn't interested. Well, I'm looking at all the correspondence we have, me trying the platform. Where did it ever show that I wasn't interested? This is a sales lesson. This is a very, very important sales lesson, which is if you have the person's attention, there's still a chance to make a sale. There's still a chance to close. Just because one little negotiation doesn't work out, doesn't mean you can't close the deal. It's so funny. So he just assumed because he tossed a figure, I tossed another figure, he didn't agree with that figure. So he thought I wasn't interested, but obviously I was still gonna be okay with his figure because I kept going with the process. <laughs> you can apply this to so many things. Think about, let's say you're trying to sell something, right? Let's say I'm trying to sell this pen. If I say five bucks, you say no, or you say three bucks, but I don't want to do three bucks. Maybe I could say four bucks. Or even if you say five bucks, are you crazy? I could say, okay, three bucks. You don't just go five bucks. The other person says no. And then, and I didn't even say no. That's the thing. I didn't even say no, but okay. Even if the other person says no, you can still say, how about three bucks? How about two bucks? How about two pens for five bucks, right? That's what sales is. And I don't know why Casey, and again, these past few years have been a weird time. So maybe his head was just not completely in the right place. But if you're the one trying to recruit people to your platform, trying to take my audience of however thousand and potentially get hundreds of them onto your platform, you should try a little harder than take the first impasse and think that means this sale can't close. I mean, you can apply this to so many things. In life, you try something. You fail once. Do you try again? Yes, and again, I hope you understand this wasn't even a failure. It was still going and he just thought that I wasn't interested. Oh my God, it's just so funny. We can even apply it since I talked about Chinese dating show. You ask a girl to go somewhere, right? She doesn't want to go to that one place. Does that mean it's over? Maybe you should just another place to go, right? So basic sales 101. If the person's still actively talking to you, in fact, my last email, I was thanking him. Talk to him, still talk to him. You can still close the deal. <laughs> So guys, I hope this is a good lesson for 2023. It's not just for sales. It's just in life. Unless the person has officially said F you or don't talk to me again or whatever iteration of that. Notice me using iteration. I've been spending time in tech. <laughs> Deal could still be on guys. Okay, shout out to Casey, inspired this video as much as the deal didn't work out. But <laughs> um, I will definitely do a video soon about my braces. So I'll tell you a lot about what caused me to really get braces. It wasn't just because some of my teeth were screaming. Something related to nose breathing 
and I was doing nose breathing wrong. So that's another in-depth video. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.